Hi! Today we'll be drawing a rectangle rug. So you need a piece of paper and something to write with. Uh, we will be starting out by making two vertical lines, kind of um, maybe a couple inches from the edge of your paper. So we've got one and the other here like this. If you have a ruler, you could measure because we want both of these to be about five inches tall, but if you don't, that's okay. Just kind of um, look at mine and see about how tall they are. So you're leaving a couple inches on each side. And then we're going to do a horizontal line across and a horizontal line across the bottom. All right, so this is gonna be the center of our rug. And in the center of it, we're going to kind of tile it um, like you do in math, a little bit like that. So we're going to draw our own grid here. We're going to put four little marks on the left side, um, evenly spaced. So one, two, three, four. If you have a ruler and you measured five inches, then you can put your ruler up here and all you need to do is measure off the inches. One, two, three, four, five. But if you don't, then just follow me. And then on this side, same thing. We're going to do one, two, three, four. So four little marks spread out. And then we're going to connect those with straight lines the best we can. If they don't line up exactly right, that's okay. Mine are not quite perfect. Okay, so then we're going to do more tick marks along the top. We're going to do um, seven across the top. So we want to make, let's see, hopefully that's that'll work out. So if we're doing seven, we can do about one in the middle, and then three on this side, and three on that side. So if you have a ruler, this should be about eight inches. I forgot to say that, I think. But um, if you don't, then you can just do it like me. So one in the middle and three on each side. So seven tick marks all together. And then you're going to connect those as well. Okay, so this is the middle of our rug. Now, if we wanted to talk about area for a minute, then um, we could say that there's a couple different ways you could find the area. If you know that this side is five inches and this side is eight inches, you can multiply those to get 40 inches, or you can count all these squares. So if you count them all up, there should be 40. Um, and so 40 square inches. So then for the rest of our rug, we're going to leave that up to our creativity. So we have our grid. Now you might want to do um, some more geometric designs with uh, straight lines and shapes. Or you might want to do something more organic with curved lines. So it's up to you what you want to do. I'm going to do a little bit of geometric lines so I did lines out from the corners and then I went back to my middle spot and did it like the outside of a capital A and then I connected those and I'm going to do the same thing up here except go in the other direction so it's um, symmetrical it's going out the other way And down here, do something similar. Add a big triangle out to the sides. So I found my center point first. I put a little dot, and then I could draw my two lines to that spot. 
Okay, so this is the outline of my rug, and I'm going to sign my name. You're welcome to make your outline more detailed if you want. And you can add other shapes inside it before you color. And if, if you're happy with it like this, then that's great. We can, I'm going, I'm planning to add in some more detail when I color. So you can do it that way too. Today I have oil pastels. If you have some that you'd like to use, that's great. You can do that with me. If not, you can use um, just your pencil or pen to add more designs and shade it in or any other kind of coloring supplies you might have. It's kind of fun that we have this grid here in the middle because that can become a pattern. Um, you, could, you can do all kinds of things when you're coloring in a grid, as you, as you know. So you can choose like a color pattern, you can make it symmetrical. You could also try to draw um, like a letter, maybe the first letter in your name, by coloring in certain squares. You could do an image, so like you can do a some land and a sunrise by just choosing certain squares to color in. So you can take a minute and think about what you want to do on yours. You could also not do any pattern, you could just do random colors in, in the squares. <clears throat> that could be fun too. your own rug that you're making up so you get to decide what it looks like and maybe you'll want to think about colors that um, go with a certain room in your in your home uh, maybe it's like um, your dream rug if you had your own room that you could design however you wanted maybe that you could choose colors that would go with that that could be coming from just your favorite color or um, your favorite team colors or maybe just um, thinking of something that inspires you like if you have a certain favorite flower for example um, think about like what colors are in that and maybe you can use some of those colors on your rug so just some ideas They should all look different at the end. Kind of start the same, but end differently. And with, with oil pastels, I'm using this just like I would use a crayon. It's not um, dusty like chalk pastels are, so I can just put it right down and I don't need to um, rub it in with a cloth. You can do something like that if you want to, because they do blend a little bit, but um, you don't have to. It, it's, it sticks better to the paper already on its own. It doesn't need to be pushed in as much. So you can just use it like a crayon. And then a really neat thing about these is that you when you do layer them, then they, they mix really well. So you can create new colors if you want. I'm, I'm sticking with um, just using my squares to color. But as I'm doing that, I'm thinking, you know, really, you don't have to just stay with these square shapes. You could be blending across the lines. You don't have to stay in the lines. And also, um, you could be dividing these squares up into more shapes if you wanted. So like, for example, you could be doing um, half squares like this with different colors. So um, your, your pattern could be all different kinds of things. A 
lot of times um, I try to have you avoid using words um, in your drawings just because unless unless it's just part of like it needs to be there if it's part of something you're drawing and that's true today too I would like you to avoid using words so let's say for example you were doing <clears throat> your favorite team um, colors let's say they were purple and yellow or I, so then you're gonna you're gonna use those colors <clears throat> not write the team name and hopefully by the way you do the colors and the design you'd get the idea across that this was about that team so try to be creative with using colors and designs instead of just writing what it is. That way um, you, you're making the viewer do a little more artistic thinking because they have to figure it out. And then it also makes the artist do more thinking too to try to figure out how could you get an idea across just using pictures and no words. So I'm, I'm just doing this pattern with these colors coming in each time I'm doing a new color. Um, oh, looks like I forgot one. On each touching the last one so I'm bringing it in and I'm following just a rainbow pattern of warm to cool colors but you can do whatever whatever you like So, um, if you would like to take a break <clears throat> as you're coloring, if your hand gets tired or if you just need to refocus and come back, that's great. You can always push pause and go walk around, um, do something else, get your mind off on something else for a little bit, and then come back. Um, when your energy and your attention is refreshed and so that way you'll be able to finish and do quality work. So does, you, you don't need to do this in one sitting. You can definitely spread it out. There's still a little bit of um, material coming up off the paper with this. They're, they are, they just have more to them than crayons in that way. So you might want to have a cloth or a tissue. And if you do have one and you blend it in, that, that will also work. It will help smooth things out. So I've got the middle of my rug and then I'm going to move to the outside. Let's see here. Okay. So I'm going to continue my pattern going out. Um, for mine because I started I've got cool colors expanding out to warm and I'll have the warm colors coming out and then it might go to purple on the very outside which um, means that I've gone almost all the way around the color wheel and back to blue
these big shapes are an area where it could also be fun to take the shape and break it down into smaller shapes. So um, you could do a smaller triangle inside of it, or you can do patterns inside these, maybe stripes or other things like that. You could draw pictures of things in them. Actually do I like to have something under my paper so that if I need to go off the edge, I can. So um, remember that part. Just uh, It's nice to be able to color all the way to the edge so that it looks finished. And so if you forgot to grab something, just go get like a, an older piece of paper that you don't need or a, a piece of newspaper or something that you're going to recycle. You can get that colored in. There are lots of cool rugs in the world, so if you need some ideas, you could um, you could look some up on the internet. You could have your parents um, help you with that, or you could just, if you have a rug in your own home, you could take a look and see what some of the patterns are. For my last triangles, I'm going to use um, a few different colors here. So I've got some more of like raspberry red, a little bit of a cooler red. I'm getting closer to my cooler colors now. Let's see. Do I'm gonna do this one? I'm gonna choose another color for my. Um, actually, I'm going to use this for the sides too. One thing I love about oil pastels is how bright and bold they are. They just come out so, so um, nicely like that. I love that. <clears throat> some some medium are harder to um, get such a bright color with the first time. You have to go over it a bunch of times and press really hard, but this kind, you don't have to go over it too many times. It's just already like that if you're pushing hard enough. So it's a little bit more, almost like paint in that way, where you can just get a really bold color the first time if you want it.
and they're a, a little bit messier than crayons, but um, kind of in a good way. I kind of like the way that they're a little bit messier because they, it's a little bit more of a forgiving line. Like it, it's, um, it just blends a little easier. Okay, my last sections. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go with a purple here because I want to tie it back in to the color that's next to blue on the color wheel. So we, if we went all the way back around, we'd have purple at the end. I'm just gonna tie those together. These colors next to each other that look so similar, that have that similar warmth, that, um, or these colors next to each other, any colors that are close to each other on the color wheel are called analogous colors. So um, these ones, or these ones, or those, we have our analogous, I'm doing a lot of analogous colors in mine. By putting them next to each other, we see how similar they are. And then we also notice just how they're a little bit different. So it's just an interesting look, an interesting way to put colors together sometimes to do very similar colors next to each other. Okay, I think I'm done with that. So if you want to go back and add any um, any detail on top, like if you want to blend it in um, using cloth or a tissue, that can really smooth out some of these um, spots where it has a little white showing through. Another thing you can do is take another color and just go on top of it, and that can also kind of blend it in, and especially if it's like a similar color. See how that kind of blended that in and got rid of some of the white spots. Um, it just makes it look a little more finished. using yellow because yellow doesn't show up very much it's so light and so I can blend those oh and then when I'm blending it it's picking up color from the other spots and kind of adding it in I, if you can see that that's kind of neat and then we'll use um, one of these oranges to do the same thing out here trying to make it look really nice all finished off it's good to go back and look and see what else, what more you can do when you're finishing something Same thing on these purple shapes. If, 
and if you have oil pastels and you they have a wrapper you can just peel it off or peel off part of it if you want when we add layers of color like this it just creates a more rich look so just any time that you put two layers together or three it just kind of adds an interest to what you're doing another great one for blending is white if you have white you can blend right over the top and it will make it a lighter color of whatever it was um, so that's an option too Add, makes things look a little more natural I think when we add a couple layers just because that's how things look in nature sometimes they're not always just one color all right so here's my drawing from today thank you so much for drawing with me I hope you have a great day and we'll see you next time bye